Hey everyone, I'm Chris from Champion Helmets and thanks for joining me today for our review of the Shark Squall 2. So thanks for joining us for our review of the Shark Squall 2. Now the Squall 2 is going to be a full face sport touring helmet and it's going to be an improved version of the original Shark Squall. So they have made a few improvements and I'll point them out a little bit later on. But uh, when it comes to the Squall 2, there's going to be two major themes. And the first one's going to be value, and the second is going to be LEDs. So I'm going to speak a lot about value and quite a bit about LEDs with this helmet, because that's really what uh, I think defines it. So the value. This is going to be an entry-level helmet at $260 uh, US dollars RRP. So definitely entry-level. And it's going to just be full of value. And yeah, be prepared for me to say uh, the word value quite a lot throughout this review. But yeah, everything just has that feel to it. And then with the LEDs, a special uh, unique aspect of this helmet. So the LEDs are going to uh, give you better visibility. They're going to make you look cool. They're going to pretty much, you know, make you uh, a safer rider. People will be able to see you better. I think that's a great feature of a helmet, really. Something that I think could be really int uh, integrated into more helmet designs. So if you want to see more Shark Squall 2 designs or you want to see our reviews of similar helmets, make sure to check us out on YouTube, Champion Helmets YouTube, and that way you can stay up to date with everything that we're doing. So first of all, the shell. So the material is nothing too shocking. It's polycarbonate, which is what we would expect for an entry-level helmet like this. Uh, it's not the best material. Fiberglass and carbon fiber are definitely stronger and lighter, but uh, polycarbonate is still good. It's got great... Uh, shock resistance and all that stuff. It's just going to be uh, better suited to an entry-level helmet. And it will weigh a little bit more. Speaking of weight, uh, this helmet is going to weigh 1550 grams, which was surprising because on the helmet, you might be able to see at the bottom here, it's listed as being 1470 grams. Very small text though, not sure if you can really see that. But yeah, so Shark may have fudged their numbers by about 100 grams. It's not too bad, a lot of, you see it a lot with helmets, but uh, yeah, I prefer 100% honesty from a manufacturer. Just uh, my opinion. Further, it's going to be available in two different shell sizes, and yeah, that's about it. So it's going to be a pretty good uh, weight overall. It's quite average for an entry-level helmet, uh, especially made of polycarbon, it sits quite well amongst its peers. So let's move on to safety, because that's a pretty important feature of a motorcycle helmet. So the Squall 2 has been uh, safety rated by Sharp, and it did very well. You can see that it scored 4 out of 5 stars, which is uh, very good marks in my opinion, I think in most people's opinions. And especially for an entry-level helmet, I think it speaks uh, volumes about this value oriented helmet. It is uh, going to be very safe. You can see the only places it was really let down were on the sides where they test it. Uh, and even there it scored kind of like uh, average, like in the yellows. So. That's not at all bad. I'm uh, quite pleased with that result. And it goes to show that the helmet will stand up pretty well if you ever need it to. But if you want to avoid that, uh, the Shark actually has uh, LEDs in it, like I've mentioned before. And you can see them here. I'll show you how to turn them on. There's a little uh, kind of like button here. It is, sorry. So you just push that on. And you can set it to different uh, settings, of course. So you have on, pulsing, and off. So I'll set them to on. And you can see them here on the top on the chin, and also underneath the spoilers. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you can get about a day's worth of continuous light out of these, a bit longer if you set it to pulse, and you can charge it uh, with a USB cable. So this is a great, unique feature of this helmet, and I really like it. So onto the ventilation, and of course, we'll start with the chin. You can see this vent here on the chin. It's going to kind of crack more than it opens. You can maybe see it better like that. Uh, and then when it is open, it's going to vent only onto the uh, visor via these vents here. So we'll close it up, and then we'll come to the top. You can see this is the only inlet on top here. Uh, here. <coughs> Controlled via this slider on top as well. A little bit stiff, sounds a little bit plasticky. But yeah, it's going to vent into some deep uh, channels in the EPS, which makes up for the small kind of area for the air to get in. Then at the back, it's all going to escape underneath the spoiler here. You can see it better upside down maybe, out this little vent at the bottom. So overall, the ventilation is okay. Not particularly great, but for a value oriented uh, entry-level helmet, it's gonna be fine and those deep channels really help it out in the end. 
Uh, and further, the vents are pretty easy to open and close with gloves on, which is a handy little plus. So the visor of the Squall 2 is uh, overall a plus, and that's because it's got some cool features. Uh, first of all, it's optical class 1, so it's not going to mess with your vision. Always handy when you're riding. Next, it's going to be anti-scratch, and it's going to have 5 millimeters uh, thickness, and that's great for your protection. The best part, though, is that it's pinlock prepared, and that pinlock is provided in the box. So that's going to add so much great value to this helmet, and it's a good thing for Shark to include, really. It's a bit weird, though, because Shark's top uh, level helmet, the Race R Pro, isn't pinlock prepared, and it doesn't come with a pinlock. So, yeah, I'm not sure why the Squall 2 does, but I'm very happy to see it on this helmet. So on the inside of the visor, we do have a drop-down sun visor as well. Let me open it. You can see it. Uh, it's controlled via this little toggle slider thingy here, so I'll just press it down, and it drops down. Show you that again. Just like that. And this is nice and big. It's easy to use. And the visor itself is going to be pretty deep. It's going to be uh, pretty wide as well, so you get good sun protection with the visor, which is always great. Taking off the visor is pretty easy as well in the Squall 2, so let me show you how that works. First, you lift it up, kind of unseat it, and then just pull it out. And it does take a little bit of force, so don't be afraid to give it a little bit of a pull when you get into the right position. And then you just kind of push it back on, reseat it, and it fits back in. It's a pretty easy system, sorry. And then we have the uh, auto seal visor mechanism, and that's going to help to really pull the visor onto the shell of the helmet. And speaking of that, we get to noise isolation. So noise isolation is something that has definitely been improved with the Squall 2. The aerodynamics of the helmet were, were uh, worked upon to make it quieter. There's a wind guard on the bottom and we have that auto seal for the visor. So all of this has helped to make it quieter overall. And the inner liner also helps to keep it relatively quiet. Considering the price point of the Squall, it does perform well on noise isolation. So now I'm going to take the liner off and I'll show you some of those more uh, value oriented features of this helmet. So, get it up on my donuts. First we'll take out the wind guard. Nice and easy to come off. Then we'll get some of these cheek pads off. Two of them to be precise. Feed this through. And the inner liner is quite good. It's uh, Shark's 3D inner liner, so it's, you know, it does feel pretty comfortable. And it's going to do a lot of good things. Obviously, it's removable, it's washable, it's quick drying, antibacterial, you know, pretty good things to have on, a, uh, on an inner liner. Then let me push this through again. Yes, I love removing the liner of these helmets. Awesome. There we go. So pull that off, pull that out. Cheek pad down. Then we get here to the top liner. My least favorite part is taking off these snaps. There we go. And then this interesting is sorry, interestingly, just comes off like this. So you have this rather than uh, snaps. You know, quite interesting. So right. Onto the inside, and you can see that uh, deep V, and that's the ventilation channeling, uh, V for ventilation, I guess. But it's not too much ventilation, uh, it's not going to offer too much, which is, uh, I think, going to li limit the ventilation of this helmet. And that's a bit of a disappointment, but, you know, it's not too bad, really. All right, so let me show you some of the uh, value-orientated uh, features of this helmet. First of all, I'll show you in, in the shell. It's, you get like random bits of glue, like this, like glue here. It's not really finished well. And then you get uh, like this Velcro on the inside, just comes off so easily. It's, the glue is just kind of cheap with this helmet. And then you have here the charger. It can pop loose. 
So you've got to reseat it properly. Uh, let me show you the charging cable, actually. So the charging cable, here it is. Uh, it's about 30 centimeters long, which is annoying when you want to charge a big helmet because, you know, look how it compares to the helmet. Uh, and then it looks like something that's come off of an early 2000s computer. It doesn't have that quality look to it. Then let's go to the headliner and everything on the outside looks nice. Like this looks pretty good for a liner. And we do this. And then you can start to see like some stuff you don't want to see. You can see like this uh, loose string everywhere it's been sewn. It's not really been uh, finished properly. And this is on the other underside. It's not too important, but it's just, you know, it shows some of the value orientation features and focus of this helmet. So coming back to the bottom end, we have a micro ratchet closure here. Fairly easy to use, pretty simple. And then on the very bottom, uh, you're gonna have space for a uh, Shark to the communication system, which is Shark's own brand of communication system. And it's going to fit into the back, into a slot in the EPS. There's going to be cutouts for speakers in the EPS. And if you want to see a review of the Shark Tooth uh, system, you can check that out on our YouTube page. And if you want to, you can get uh, the product bundle with the Shark Tooth on our website with the Shark Swall 2. So make sure to scroll down and you get a nice deal there. So my take on this helmet is that it's got that great value. It's a great entry level helmet. And they've just tried to shove in as many different features as they can while still not raising the price of the helmet. And that is uh, great for something that's entry level. Uh, and yeah, this is such good value. I said it a thousand times, I'll say it another time. But yeah, value uh, helmet. So yeah, it has a few negatives, like the material polycarbonate, only two shell sizes as well. Ventilation, not super strong. Uh, yeah, and then it's got some good things. It's got like the, the pin lock provided in the box. It's got the LED, it's got the four star safety rating. These are all big pluses, and especially on an entry level helmet. I think that the pros far away the cons uh, when you take everything into consideration. Just make sure that you don't look underneath anything. The Shark Squall 2, this full face sport touring helmet is great in terms of value and safety. It's got a lot of great aspects there. And for an entry level helmet, it's going to be a great option for pretty much any rider around. Uh, it's like the LEDs are something that really sets it apart and makes it a special and unique helmet. So this has been our review of the Shark Squall 2. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel, uh, check your numbers on YouTube and that way you can stay up to date with everything that we're doing. Thanks for watching.